heavy as it looks, just really awkward. <laughs> really awkward. And it was wet from the dew on it. I couldn't get a grip on it. Got a couple more pieces here. The top half of the box. <clears throat> this is the standpipe that goes inside the tank. And then there's that cap there. Oh, see the cap. We're going to spray all of those up here. Looks like there's some instructions maybe. Maybe just a, might just be a bill of materials or contents tag, shipping label, I don't know. Uh, we're going to get all this stuff here on the porch, get it all laid out, see what we got. <clears throat> Alright, we are on a tremendous new journey. Uh, we've got to do some work on our water well. Now, I think I've showed you guys when we were doing all the pump house, I've moved the pressure tank inside and done all that. Somewhere along the way, and I don't really know that it has anything to do with moving the pressure tank, our well has begun to produce a significant amount of sediment. Our water well is, is, was terrific. It was clean, you know, no iron, no sulfur, very little calcium, very little hardness, very, very nice well water. But then just all of a sudden starts producing sediment. And I don't know if our screen has collapsed. I know that the well was not properly sand packed, but they say in theory, if you completed the well in a sand, then they shouldn't you shouldn't need to gravel pack the well, which I would agree with that also. So we don't know where the silt instead of I'm call, I'm gonna call it silt. I've never I haven't seen it in the soils lab. We don't know where the sediment's coming from. We have a eight eight one thousandths screen width, which is very, very small. Um, and it assuming that the well isn't collapsed, then it's coming through that screen which is very tiny. Anyway, we, we're looking at some options here. Uh, I'm gonna take you guys along as we go as to what all we're gonna do. But the first thing is this great big box here. This is totally new to me. This is a clack um, sediment tank. So basically this is just a big pressure tank, just like what we already have, but it's hollow. Uh, and I'll show you as we hook it up, it's got a top fill and drain, and then it's got a blow down in the bottom. So in theory, the water comes in the top, it has a little bit of settling time in the tank so that sediment can precipitate out. We know the sediment will precipitate um, relatively quickly. You know, we fill up a five gallon bucket with it, the water looks a little cloudy. You give it 30 seconds to a minute and you start to see it set out in the bottom. So it does precipitate relatively quickly. So our hope is that by just adding a tank and giving it a little bit more retention time, uh, that it'll catch a lot of that. What we suspect right now is that our pressure tank has basically filled up with sediment in the bottom up to the uh, wherever the drain level is and so now sediment that does come into the pressure tank is just immediately bypassing the pressure tank coming right into the house. We hope that's a simple solution. But we're going to start with the retention tank. Uh, we're going to see how that does. If we still have sediment problems we're going to add a sand filter in. We're going to keep our paper filters. I hate that we have to go to so much work to filter this water when for a year and a half it was clean 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 you know but if the wells collapsed, you know, okay, I'm a production engineer. I know how to work on wells, but on a water well, a PVC water well like this, I don't really know what I can do. I, I, it'd be cheaper to drill a new well than it would to try to work over our well and patch it if it's collapsed. So if it's collapsed, it's going to stay collapsed. If it's coming in through the screen, there's darn sure nothing you can do about it because I can't change the water table. I can't change the aquifer other than to drill a new well <laughs> and drill deeper and do a better aquifer. So we're going to start with the sediment tank. Hopefully this is the easy solution. Um, if not, then we're going to go with, you know, we'll add the sand filter uh, and then we'll, you know, still have our paper filter. So I think, you know, going through all that, I think it'll be enough. And ideally everything will be just, you know, manual blowdown once a month or whatever. We go in, just dump the bottom valve, flush out all the crap out of the bottom, and we're back to business. Anyway, I'm going to get this box brought up on the patio, get it ripped open, and we'll take a look at it. So I'll just show you guys around this thing a little bit. This is supposed to be the most important feature of the whole thing. This is your blowdown valve, which does not actually have a valve on it, but it's got this, I don't know, patented design, whatever they call it, but basically it's just a, a union, but it's got an O-ring in there. So you can rotate this thing whatever direction you want to go. Kind of silly because there's only a hole cut right here. 
there's no other holes cut all the way around so it seems like you would just orient it that way but I guess you can probably yeah see you can orient this base any direction you want to go with it or you can take it completely off I guess so then you can turn that to line up with it and you can use that to your advantage depending on when you put your top valve in which way it lines up we'll stand her up here and there's another little bag of goodies like I said not too heavy just awkward so here's our bag of goodies that's our tank topper as they call it inlet and outlet um, looks like it's got some adapter fittings several adapter fittings different o-rings I have no idea what that piece of PVC pipe is for, but it looks like there's some instructions in here. So I'm gonna read through those and I'll let you know.